Hello and welcome to episode number four of this Code War series. Today we're gonna take a look at another 8Q problem, but I think this one is quite interesting actually. So what the problem is, is you can pause the video and take a look at it in more depth, but essentially we're given a list and we have to add all the numbers except for the highest and lowest number of that list. So as you can see, within this list, one is the lowest, 10 is the highest. So excluding those, we do six plus two, which is eight, plus eight, which is 16, and we get that. When this list, we have two repeated minimum values, so we only take away one. So we can see the highest lowest element is respectively only one element at each edge, each edge, at each edge, even if there are more than one with the same value. So we do one plus two plus three, which gives us the value six over here. So let's go ahead and get straight down into doing this. You guys know the drill. I'm gonna open up my own workspace and let's do it. So within this list that we're given, we need some way of getting the maximum number and the minimum number first of all. So those are our two main objectives. So let's work out the minimum number. Let's call it zero for now. And what we're simply gonna do is loop through this array. And actually, are we allowed to assume that I'm going to make an assumption that the numbers they give us, oh wait, actually they're gonna be interesting. So we need some way, uh, let me, I'll leave that for now, I'm probably gonna change that later. So basically for item in R, we need to say if the item is less than min, the minimum value, but minimum min is a keyword. I'm gonna call it mini, mini. And by the way, I knew it was a keyword because it was highlighted in yellow by my IDE. So you don't wanna use keywords for variable names. But anyway, if item is less than mini, then mini has to equal item. The thing is though, I don't know if I'm allowed to do this. And I'll show you the problem that I'm thinking of. Actually, let me return mini for now. And we can do a uh, print sum array, and let's put in one, seven, five, right? Clearly the minimum value is one, but if we run this program, what we're gonna get is zero, zero, four, underscore min max dot pi. We're gonna get the number zero because the number we initialized it with is always going, because this zero is actually less than the minimum value of the array. So what I'm actually going to do is assign mini to the first item in our given array. That way we always look at the first item first and everything else we look at is in, re is in relation to that first item. So that should work. And even if we put in negative numbers like minus 10 at the very end, it should work for that as well. So that works quite well, that's fine. And in the same exact way, in the same exact way, we can have maxi. I'm not doing max because that's a keyword. So uh, assign that to R0 for now. And in here, we're gonna write if item is greater than maxi, uh, maxi is equal to item. Oh. And notice how I didn't put an elif here. The reason I didn't do an elif is because I want these two if statements to work absolutely independently of each other. So even if that actually those two can't be true at the same time. So actually elif wouldn't matter at this point because these two conditions by definite, no, 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 I'm completely wrong. I thought this said mini, but it actually says maxi. So these two conditions, I'm, I can't think of an example on the spot, but I, I imagine that there would be a situation where both of these could be true at the same time. And if we had an elif here, only the first if statement would be evaluated. But because we want both of them to run independently, I'm going to just put in an if statement instead of an elif. So if I return mini and maxi, and I print the sum of array that, uh, that should be the minimum, and the maximum could be accessed by this, all right because the zero is the mini, it's the first argument, as the first uh, output, and one is the second, which is maxi, so we should get minus 10 and seven, which works perfectly fine. So what we can actually do now is actually add the numbers of this array together. So we know uh, we, the, mini and the, the minimum and the maximum values are correct. So what we can do at this point is 
simply create another for loop. So for item in array, we can actually create a new variable called sum. All right, let's call that zero in the beginning. And we're just gonna add every um, item onto sum. And remember, plus equals just means sum equals sum plus item. It's just a syntactic sugar. It just makes it look prettier and nicer. So if we do this, we should have the sum. Let's just return the sum for now to see if this works. We get the number three, one plus seven is eight, plus five is 13, minus 10 is three, that works. And now finally, we can just return sum minus mini, mac minus maxi, because we wanna account for the minimum and the maximum values, and we get the number six. And this should actually work. Let's run some examples on it. And it didn't work. None type object is not subscriptable. Interesting. Uh, I'm a bit confused at what is going on. I'm guessing the array they give us isn't actually an array or something. Uh, oh, they test us with none. That's interesting. Because th because this is such a special case, what I'm gonna do for here is right from the bat, even if they don't say, even if you know, even before we run the rest of the program, if r equals none, then a return, then just return, return nothing. What does it want to return? It should equal zero. Okay, return zero. Because that's really a cheeky move from them, I think. List index out of range. Mm. Okay, let's say if r equals none, or r is equal to an empty list, minus three should equal zero. That is interesting. Um, let's actually test that out. I'm curious to see uh, what's gonna happen here. And actually, by the way, a more efficient way I could have done this is if r in, and then put in all the things that I wanna check for. So if it's none or if it's an empty list. So as you can see, the first two passed. So it's just checking if r is none or if r is equal to this empty list. It's just a quick way I could have done that. But um, minus three, let's check with the input of simply having minus three here. We get three, but we know that the, what should the answer actually be? Because, huh, the sum of the list, I guess it's quite uh, strangely worded in my opinion. So, so, what we're gonna write is if that is in that, or len of r is equal to one, because I think those are just special cases. As you can see, everything else works, but just this piece of code had to be added for these uh, special exception cases um, that, they've given, that, they've, that they've given to us. So as you can see, this code does work. It passed all the tests. However, as with Python, there is always a better way you could do it, or rather not better, just a more efficient way uh, using less lines. So let's actually just comment all of this out. I'm gonna leave this if statement at the top here because I think you know, that's gonna be needed. That's a good check for the special cases that they throw at us. But what I'm going to do is simply use some built-in functions by Python. The sum function gives you the sum of whatever list you pass into it. The min function gives you the minimum value of whatever thing you pass into it and the same for max. So what we could do is we could immediately just write return and just say, give us the sum of this list minus the minimum value of this list, which is called R, and then minus the maximum value of this list. And it should work just as well. So if I put in 10, 2, 4, 45, it should give us the answer 12. And it works. So what I'm literally gonna do is just copy all of that and get rid of all of that and it should still pass every single test. So just this, uh, uh, what's that? This problem is a great example of how using Python's built-in uh, functions, we can actually speed up our code, or as not speed up our code, but speed up the process of writing our code, because instead of having to write all of this, we could just do it in one line like so. But at the same time, it's sometimes good to know how these functions could be implemented under the hood, how Python, the creators of Python themselves have written down these functions, the min, max, and sum functions, and we've experimented a little bit with that today using for loops. 
But that concludes the episode for today. Hope you guys learned something. And if I submit this, we should be on our way to getting some points. So as you can see, we went from 8 to 10 points through this episode. So thanks for watching, guys. Uh, really hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please leave a thumbs up. Always, as always, uh, if you have any feedback, good or bad, leave that in the comment section down below. I will be happy to interact with you. But hope you enjoyed this episode. I will see you in the next one. And hopefully, we might even go down into some 7Q problems very, very soon. Thanks for watching. And as always, keep coding.